Hey everybody, good to see you back once again. The time has finally come. We're dusting off an old project that has not been in the forefront for years. It's the old Minneapolis Moline prototype, serial number X231. And uh, yeah, it's been back here, just kind of next to the bench for the last probably close to four years, ever since I drug that D2 home and then YouTube just started going crazy over it. And well, yeah. Uh, just cleaned all the stuff out from around it pulled it out a little bit the engine is here under this sheet So in all of its green primer glory. All right quick edit. I'll add this in later I've decided to give you all a better view of the engine after we had that rear casting repaired We rebuilt this first so this entire engine is back to 100% new spec it is a wild deal 10x prototype casting with a chiseled away external governor mount where they basically took an older ZB style block that had the vertical rockers with the horizontal flathead valve design and turned it into a push rod overhead valve engine. And um, there was a lot of things in here that required a few different attempts at assembly because certain pieces had to be put in out of order and it was really fun. So back to our regularly scheduled programming. And, um, well, we're going to give this one another go around for at least a couple weeks, a few weeks, I should say, because I have some time. I've been able to free up. We can get back into this. And um, we're a little ways through the rolling chassis portion of the restoration. And this poor old tractor is the worst unit I have ever tried to do any work on in my life. Um, if it was not a one-of-one one prototype it just would have been complete scrap and i i mean that when i say it because everything was just so badly broken on this and we'll put it this way it made this complete d2 rebuild that i spent well about the last four years doing seem like a vacation by comparison and this was the worst condition d2 i'd ever started out with in my life that's how bad this tractor is i'm sure it has a consciousness, a soul to it that is just wanting to become a new Kia. I mean, it, <laughs> it fights you every step of the way. So I know there's a lot of new eyeballs that have bailed onto the channel since I last left off with X231. So I think it is wise to do just a quick recap of what the tractor is and how we got to this point. So here are three archive photos from the Minneapolis Marine Research and Development Shop from January 1955. This is X231 when it was brand new. And I have to believe it was just a baby at this point in time because you can still see masking like on the shifter knob and in a couple of other places. I believe it had just received its fresh coat of paint after being assembled. So this is really all we have for like a before picture or a brand new stage right here. This is the prototype to the Minneapolis Moline Model 445. Now they used a sequential numbering system for all their prototypes. I have another factory photo here of another prototype tractor which is styled almost identical to X231. This one is X number 228 and it looks like it's a lower slung, slightly smaller size, maybe like a 335 industrial prototype it's definitely smaller than this universal style tractor right here but yeah they used a sequential system so there were at least two prototypes between this one and this one we don't have any photos of those um just looking in the background of this r d shop i would love to know like here's a tractor back here looks like it's you know half complete i'd love to know what's underneath that cover there's another tractor with a steering wheel sticking up back here Sometimes the backgrounds are even more interesting than what's in the foreground. And of course, you all are familiar with X253. That's where the 253 in Squatch 253 comes from. And we got the Minneapolis Million Collectors Club 2023 calendar the other day. Look what we found in October. I was like, I recognize that guy. I didn't even know it was going to be in here, but <laughs> they could have just asked me. I'd have sent them a color picture of it. <laughs> but... Uh, these are the archive photos we have of X-253 as well. And um, it's, uh, if you know what you're looking at, because I've been into every piece of that tractor, you can see quite the development process just across these few black and white photos. The most interesting one is right here 
And some of these guys are Moline guys. Some of these guys are the suits, the outside investors. And this was the get together meeting they had around X253 in the R&D shop. And um, the scandals that are going on in this photo are mind boggling. Half of these big money guys in the suits would just as soon have strangled one another than stand shoulder to shoulder. But they were playing nice for the camera. This guy, he was an Oliver engineer currently employed by Oliver Tractor Company in 1956 when this picture was taken in the Minneapolis Moline R&D shop. How he got there, we'll never know. But I can tell you who every one of these guys were, their backgrounds, which ones were Moline guys, which ones were outsiders, which ones were just money guys. And the scandals going on here are crazy. Not only would these guys just rather not even be around each other, they're sitting on a prototype Minneapolis Moline that is mounted on a production Caterpillar D2 undercarriage that Cat didn't even know that they were using for the picture. Um, just the breakdown of this photo right here could be an episode all its own. But getting back to old X231, this is what it looked like when we found it. So long story short, mid 1980s, we stumbled onto this prototype Moline tractor and then that prototype Moline crawler unknowingly did not even know what they were until probably late 1990s. So this was taken, I believe in 2002 and um, it had definitely had a hard life, but a lot of really neat attributes about it. Like I said before, that prototype dash that flares up in the center and, uh, and goes up higher and higher toward the back. It's got a really interesting four gauge instrument panel. Two of those gauges are temperature gauges and they ran a dual temp sender off of each cylinder head. I don't know if that was just another prototype design that never made it. Maybe that was for testing, wanting to have two temp gauges. Maybe it was just a concept. I don't know. This whole dash piece, it looks like it's one cast piece from the outside. When you flip it around, you can see where all of these pieces have been handmade and formed and welded on the back side, and they just ground it and flushed it on the front. So it looked rather finished. Uh, one bummer of it was this was an entire prototype three point lift and arm system that had long ago went away. Um, it had a very early production three-point lift system with arms on it when we found it, but um, it was all close enough in dimension that all that stuff worked in place of all the prototype pieces. So there's no point, no chance at this point in time to recreate really any of this and have it accurate in any way because this is the literally the only view we have of it. But what we have is part of the history, it's part of the story, and it's at least present. Fast forward to 2006, we began the initial teardown and had the unit sandblasted in a rolling chassis state just to get down to what was underneath all of the old flaking paint and rust. And um, yeah, we knew we were gonna be taking this completely apart because it had back end problems. It was parked because of that by the prior owner. And all it did was make everything look even worse. You look at all of these nasty welds around the drawbar brackets. Well, we got into it and we found horrendous casting damage. Um, a piece had got underneath a bull gear in the back end, poked the bottom out of the case, and all of those drawbar welds were from those brackets having run loose for years and years, and it broke out pieces of this casting, which it's, you can see the 10X number on there, it's a prototype one-off casting. Um, they just started gob welding those brackets on, and then they loosened up and they welded them again over and over until they finally just quit using the poor tractor. And of course, the pieces on the inside did not look any better. This was the differential carrier that came out of it. Again, all 10X prototype pieces right here. It had exploded into five different pieces. So the failure that caused the prior owner to finally park this tractor was caused by this over center clutch dog. It came out of the live power clutch that resides between the bull gears up here. And you can tell by all the impact marks on it and the teeth marks, it had rattled around between bull gears, bull pinions, ring gear, drive pinion. Finally, what killed the tractor was it got picked up by this right side bull gear, carried around and wedged between the teeth and the bottom of the case. That sent such a shock through the drive line that it blew the old differential carrier apart. It actually chipped the ring gear and it barber pole twisted the drive pinion. Um, all those prototype parts were beyond repair. Well, in 2007, we took this casting down to Midwest Cylinder Head in Nevada, Iowa, 
because it was a one-off and if they couldn't fix this back end, the tractor was essentially dead. They literally worked magic on it. They did a thorough preheat to this. They heated the whole thing up in an oven and they did a comprehensive braze repair down here, put all the pieces back, beat it all out, added material where that drawbar bracket had broken out so badly. And they did some live power shaft bearing uh, bore repair here that we then had to build custom boring bars to, to return back to uh, true form in line with everything else. And this is about where the restoration series playlist picks up. I'll pop that playlist down in the description below. We were able to fit production 445 tractor ring gear, drive pinion, differential carrier, and bull gears into this unit. The tooth count is one tooth off between the production ring and pinion and the prototype ring and pinion. But that's okay because the old saying goes, the hands of the creator impart a tiny piece of the soul into the work itself. So being one tooth off kind of makes sense. Working forward from there, transmission gears were next. They were all a pretty straightforward fit with the exception of trying to match this production drive pinion and shaft to the bearing bores of this prototype case. We had to do some creative bearing cross-referencing to do uh, certain sized cones with certain sized cups. Luckily, we were able to fit all that stuff and kept all the 10X prototype gears. So then our next problem was the 2-3 shift fork because it had suffered a failure at one point, had been repaired, but you can see again, it had got chewed between a bunch of gear teeth and was damaged and yeah, it cracked off right here where it does that bend and it's at the narrowest point. And well, I decided the best thing to do was to recreate this shift fork altogether. I quickly determined that using the production forks and rails was not an option because the tangs that the shifter mechanism engages with are in all different spots, which means if I used production forks and rails, I would then have to use the production transmission top and shifter, and we'd be eliminating so many one-of-a-kind 10X prototype parts. We're just doing an all-new blank. So this is about the time... This tractor had pretty much beaten me last time. I was suffering burnout on the job, and um, I needed a piece of 516 steel to make a new 2-3 shift blank. I had this one on hand. It had kind of a pitted surface, but it was solid, and I, I was in the good enough stage at that point, and that's not good enough. So I've decided to um, write this blank completely off. We're going to use some of the special tools that I had made up for that one. But my thought process has since changed, and I am going to attack this in an entirely different manner. So the first thing I did was ordered up a non-pitted good piece of the appropriate steel from McMaster Car. So we have enough material here of 5 16 to do uh, two attempts at a 2-3 shift fork blank. So this is our medium from here on out. I can use the same paper template that I did before, patterned off of this original. We've already got the round bushing part made for the top of it. So I think we have a workable setup here. Um, that's kind of the long and the short of the deal. And uh, hopefully everyone wants to uh, tune in for the work that's going to be happening here over these next few weeks. Um, when we get close to, I would say, late winter, early spring, I have other projects on tractors that I actually use for work and things like that that are going to take priority over this prototype but until then we'll see how much ground we can cover so i hope you all are interested in uh sticking around for some of these episodes that are coming up for this and um yeah time to get busy so we're gonna start hammering that blank and uh hope to see you all back for that <laughs>